Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with the 13.1 mid patch update. We'll be going over updated tier lists for all 5 roles and follow up on some balance changes from the patch. But before we get to the tier list, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, onto the tier list. First, we'll start with the top laners. Orin has suddenly spiked pretty hard this patch, so we're moving him up to the OP tier. Both Jack Show and Radiant Virtue are super strong on him right now, so think about which one is best depending on what your game needs. If you're a solo frontliner, Jack Show is definitely the better option. If you have some beefier teammates and you don't need a more selfish option to deal with your lane opponent, Radiant Virtue can be an extremely OP item to enable your allies in team fights later. Olaf also gets moved up to the OP tier. Snowbally, Feast or Famine type champions are usually high risk, high reward, but Olaf has been doing so well consistently that the risk factor doesn't really seem to be there at all. He's able to get early leads in almost all matchups, and once he has an inch, he's definitely able to take the mile. Yeah, an inch makes a difference, is what I keep telling myself. Anyway, Kled has been doing super well in the past few patches, so we're moving him up to the S tier. There are a lot of different variations to his build that people go for, but to get the most out of him, you should be going to clips in most games. It's by far his best item for trading 1v1. Most people opt for Gore Trigger to focus on 5v5ing, but if that's your goal, then that's still not his best item. Jack Show is actually way better. The resists and drain gives you way more beefiness than the heal from Gore Trigger does. At some point, we removed Rangar from the top lane tier list, but we're adding him back. He takes a lot of master to really understand how to trade with him well, but once you learn how to do it correctly, he's a very versatile champion, able to beat almost anybody in lane. The Bust Rod of Agents and Seraph's Embrace were enough to make Ryze a solid B tier pick. You definitely do not want to blind pick him, as a lot of top laners will just run over you, but if you get a good lane and your team needs an AP carry over a tank, he could be a great option. Set has fallen off a bit in the top lane, so we're dropping him down to the B tier. He does have a few good matchups, but even in those, his usefulness out of lane just doesn't seem that great right now. Tom Kench is pretty much in the same boat as Set. We're moving him down to the B tier. He can be a really good counter to a select few champions, but outside of shutting those picks down, other tanks like Orn or Maokai feel much stronger right now. We underestimated how badly the nurse would hurt Muno this patch, well, at least in the middle and upper ranks. In the lower ranks, he's actually still doing decently, but in plan higher, he's pretty awful. We'll be moving him down to the C tier. Maybe it's just a lowish amount of games to go off of, but Volibear is doing really bad so far this season. We'll be moving him down to the D tier, but consider this a bit tentative. If it does turn out to be a bad sample size, we'll bump him up later. Yasuo also gets dropped down to the D tier, and this one I'm a bit more sure of. Yasuo struggles badly to deal with all the tanks and juggernauts in the meta. All that mobility doesn't seem to mean much when you just get right clicks and stat checked. Now, for the jungle, here's our list. Zac is disgustingly strong right now, so we're moving him up to the OP tier. In the first few levels, Zac doesn't do a ton. His E range is short, so finding ganks isn't too easy, but it only takes a few levels to come online. Once you hit level 9, the pressure that you can put on the map is unreal. You can gank any lane from pretty much any angle, bypassing wards and punishing opponents that even get a bit off their turret. But what really makes him busted is that he's a tank that does a ridiculous amount of damage in fights, so you're not 100% reliant on your teammates following up on your engage to kill the enemy carries. You just do that by yourself. The Jack Show changes are working immensely in favor of Udyr. Remember when APR Max Udyr was super strong last patch, and it was really unhealthy because there was no real counterplay? Well, we're right back there, and we're moving him up to the OP tier as a result. Nunu also gets moved up to the OP tier this patch. If you look at his win rate, this may not seem like it's the right thing to do, but you have to look at what people are building on Nunu. A good chunk build rocket built, and this brings his win rate down by quite a bit. When you build Nunu with either Jack Show or Radiant Virtue, you're getting him at his full potential, and that potential is really high. It's extremely hard to place Ramus on this tier list. For the first couple of days, he belongs even lower than the D tier, but with the micro patch just coming out less than a day ago at the time that we're making this, it's almost impossible to know how good or bad he is, so we'll kinda just put him in the B tier. We'll have a better idea of where he belongs in our next tier list. Hecarim is a Feast or Famine champion. If you snowball early, he can run over games, and if you don't, he's basically useless. But in his current state, he's almost never generating those early leads. You just get bullied early on by almost any other meta pick. We're dropping him down to the D tier. And the same goes for Mundo. 
We warned in the rundown that there was a good chance that he would be doing worse than when we replaced him, since he's a very sat checky type of champion. But this is even worse than we thought. He's easily one of the worst picks in the jungle. I'd even say Lee Sin may be a better pick right now. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. We'll be moving Anivia up to the OP tier. With Riot giving a big buff to both Rod of Aegis and Seraph's Embrace this patch, it should be no surprise that Anivia could become so busted. I mean, those two items are already part of her standard core build, and she was already doing well lately. Anivia is just a safe champion in general, but right now there are literally no super good answers to her as a laner. The poke mages that can sort of bully her just don't really do well at all in the tank heavy meta. So, you're able to freely scale up most games, and once you make it to two items on Anivia, it's too late for the enemy team to do much. Jace moves up to the S tier this patch. We noted a while back that Jace mid is a lot better than Jace top, so when Riot tried to buff him to make him viable in his main role, we figured something like this could happen. It's exactly what happened with Vagar and Kennen last season. Riot tried to help them with their intended roles, but they became super OP in the bot and mid lanes respectively. There is definitely a bit of a learning curve to Jace, but once you get the hang of him, he's a super strong AD mid option. Set gets emoted to the A tier. This may be a bit of a false alarm. With him being a pretty low pick rate mid laner, and the patch only being out for a couple of days, his big drop in win rate could easily be chalked up to a low sample size. Consider this one a bit tentative. Vladimir moves up to the A tier. With a super low early game presence, there are going to be some games where you just have no say in how things go. But if you can make it into the mid game, he spikes hard. And once you make it past 4 items, you can basically start 1v90. Aatrox's nerfs have brought him down to the B tier this role. It can sort of work as a counter to some opponents, but honestly, you're probably better off with other options in most cases. The combination to direct buffs to TF, as well as to Rod of Aegis, his favorite mythic, has actually made him a pretty good champion again. When played super well, you can basically say that he's an S tier or even an OP tier. But in the middle elos, his performance is overall just, well, decent. As a result, we're moving him up to the B tier for now. I never thought I would be saying these words, but Ryze actually isn't so bad right now. Just like TF, he's a champion that does way better in the higher ranks, where people understand how to play around his power spikes better, and tend to have better coordination with the jungler. I'm not 100% sure where he would fall on the higher elo tier list for now, but for this one, he'll go in the B tier. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. It turns out we severely underestimated just how hard the seemingly small buff Zaya got meant to her. We gave her a small bump in the C tier to the B tier in the patch rundown, and I thought that she could maybe go up to the S tier, but after we've seen how strong that she is with the buffs, we're actually moving her up all the way to the OP tier. Once you just get a bit of AD, her training in lane is strong, and outside of lane, she does ridiculous amounts of damage, while also having her ultimate to keep her safe from being jumped on by Engage and other divers. Another plus is that she pairs well with all types of supports. She can swap her place out between more pokey, going for all lins, and anything in between to help her adapt to any situation. Due to her being underplayed, we removed Cassiopeia from the bot lane tier list a while back, but we're going to go back on the decision right now, adding her back as an S tier pick. She isn't played a ton, but when she is seen, she's definitely a very solid pick, one that more bot lane players should consider picking up. Once you have a tier, her laning phase is actually pretty strong, and her scaling is absolutely nuts. She basically is just an AP hyper carry. So, if you want a good magic damage option, but don't want to default to the same old picks that we usually push, consider this another viable option. We'll be dropping Kalissa all the way down to the D tier. There's always the argument of, well, if you play her with an aggro support and simple heart, she can carry. But how often does it actually go that way? There's a reason her win rate is so low. In the middle elos where we aim our meta videos at, she's just a pretty awful pick. To finish things off, we have our supports. Janna moves down to the S tier. Unless Janna gets some major nerfs or a huge rework to how her kit works, she's always going to be a very good option for solo queue. She is safe in lane, has really good roam potential for an enchanter, and scales into teamfights pretty well. Her ultimate and tornado work super well to deny enemy divers, making her a great support for peeling for the backline. All that being said, the reason for her demotion is that she just doesn't have quite as high of an upper ceiling for impact in games as the OP tier champions in the current meta. The main reason for this is that it isn't a very dive heavy meta. With so many tanks and juggernauts being so strong, a lot of team fights are very front to back oriented. Her peel still has a good amount of value, as does the rest of her utility, but like I said, not quite as useful as the higher tier picks. We'll be moving Nautilus down to the A tier. This could be still too generous of a placement for him, he's just not too great right now. As with any kill lane support, there's always going to be the potential to snowball a lane super hard when laning with an aggressive ADC, but potential alone isn't enough to make a champion good. I mean, every champion league has potential to pop off. You have to look at how consistently you can reach that potential, and what happens when you don't. For example, if you're playing a Mumu, you can snowball super hard in lane, but even if you don't do well super early, his ultimate makes him an insane team fighter later. For Nautilus, you need to snowball early. He doesn't have the super OP AOE CC that makes it so easy to wipe the enemy team out. 
You have to use a single target CC to make picks and force fights that way, which is much easier to do when you're ahead and in control of the map and not super squishy. And that about wraps things up for a 13.1 new patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list down in the comment section below. And also check out our description for a link to join the Discord community. As always, good luck on Summoner's Rift everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.